Hey guys, this is part 2 of my parallax animation tutorial. As you may remember, in part 1 I have prepared all graphic resources in Affinity Designer. And in this part 2, today we're going to animate everything in the Wig Editor. So if you need to download graphic resources from previous tutorial, you can just follow the link in the description to part 1 and there you can download all resources that we're going to use today. Week Editor is free web-based animation software very similar to old school Adobe Flash. So here it is. I'm going to import all of my assets from last part, from part one. And here are my assets, PNGs without backgrounds. Okay, let's start with the first layer. I'm going to rename this layer. This will be my road. And here's my PNG for the road. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to change the size of the artboard over here in settings. I will also adjust the background color and apply. Much better. Okay, let's reposition this one. I'm going to extend this first frame. As you can see, it's only visible on the first frame. So I just drag this one frame to multiply this. Okay, so my background will be visible on multiple frames. Okay, it's time to make a new layer. Once more, I'm going to use my resources that I had prepared last week, lines for my road. We're going to do parallax animation, it means we're going to use the background movement to fake this feeling of motion, even the object in the middle is not moving. So lines are very important for this kind of animation. Now I'm adding twin to the first frame for my lines here, add twin. It's changed to black to gray color already. Now I'm extending this first frame of twin over here and I'm going to add the second position, second keyframe, add twin again. You can see a little arrow between the first twin, first frame and the last one. Now I'm going to move this element on our last frame. Just like this. And thanks to twinning option in the wig editor, all frames in between are modified for us, as you can see. Now extend this background even more, even further to here. And now we can already see how this twinning is working for us. As you may notice, I set up only the first and the last frame for this object. And everything in between is made for us thanks to twinning features. So, really easy to use. You can save a lot of time thanks to that. You don't need to go frame by frame. Okay, it's time for our next layer. This time, car. I'm going to turn my car into a clip, so click make a clip 
and now you can edit timeline so this is the new timeline just for this car as you can see this is the project timeline and I click on the car and click edit timeline I'm here inside the car timeline so this is one animation inside another very useful stuff and here I can extend this first frame and I'm ready to add the second frame as you may remember in part one I prepare three frames for my car Here are my three frames, as you can see, it's spinning the wheel here, I'm going to duplicate them, so I got six in total, nice, and I will also add a new layer here with smoke, so remember I also have prepared a little smoke, here it is, let's drag it in, in this case I'm going to use twin on it. Zoom in. And now I'm going to add twin and extend this layer. And now we need one more twin keyframe at the end, that's just like that. And for the last frame I'm going to make it much bigger and move it away from the car. So as you can see, twin is not only for moving the object around, we can also resize the object and Quick Editor will take care of that. You see, the object is resizing, I'm going to maybe rotate this as well this and it's also changing opacity so it's all thanks to twinning options I don't need to go frame by frame I just set up the first and the last frame for this little smoke okay let's give it a try oops my car is only on the first frame I need to extend that oh I got a better idea Let's twin this car into the scene. So the car will be outside the scene at first and then it will move into the scene itself. So move it here. I already add twin to the first frame. Now I'm going to extend this first frame. 12 frames, okay, this will be like one second. A new keyframe here. Let's put the car in the middle. like this and I'm going to extend it again from this position over here 12 frames before the end and now we need one more position totally at the end of the animation let's move it outside at the end okay as you can see, thanks to twinning, I got some movement here. And let's try it. Move it in. So the car animation is working. We got spinning wheels, little smoke from the back of the car. As well as my lines scrolling around. Nice. Okay, we're almost there. Just two more layers, I think.
layer number four this will be our tree line so again i'm going to drag my graphic assets from last week trees png to my scene just like that i already prepared that for parallax animation it's quite long element of background set it up here trees are shorter than lines so we've got this feeling of dip of background movement and again add twin in the first frame extend that and add one more keyframe at the end now we are ready to move it on the inside just like this and that's it really fast let's try it first frame and play it's nice the trees are moving much slower than lines in front that's what we want to get so just one more layer now layer number five this will be our city skyline background and again drag and drop to the first frame as i mentioned before you can get all of my assets from the previous video i put downloads link over there in the part one okay so this is my skyline i'm going to reduce opacity to blend it better with my sky background maybe 50 percent and again twin extend the first frame twin again keyframe at the end and move it position as you can see the skyline buildings are much shorter than tree line this will give us this nice parallax effect okay let's try it Perfect, it's exactly what we need. Buildings are scrolling much slower than trees and trees are scrolling slower than lines in the foreground. Car is in the middle, it's actually still, but thanks to the background movement, we got this feeling of motion. So, over here, just five layers based on our assets from last week. Now we are ready to save your project. So over here, it's in your download folder for the web browser using now and then click export and here you can export the video in mp4 format you must give it a moment you just need to render each frame in our case it's 180 frames and again you can find this exported video in the downloads folder for your web browser okay guys i hope you have learned something new today Thanks for watching my video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks and see you next time.